All right. So thank you for tuning into another uh, remake edition <laughs> of A Business Minute. I'm your host, sir. And today I got a special guest. Michelle Dancer is back in the building today to do her video <laughs> interview. Uh, How y'all doing? Before we get started, I want to explain why we're doing this interview. Um, during our first interview, due to technical uh, issues, we lost the video. Um, the entire video was unusable for some reason. So uh, I reached out to Michelle after the holidays and she agreed to come back and kind of talk with us again. So if you want to hear our first interview, uh, go to SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, all the good stuff. Y'all know where we at. And uh, listen to the first one. This one will be a more of a catch-up video because there's been some changes uh, since we've last spoke. Yeah. Well, not changes, like additions. Right, it's additions. More going on. There have been some blessings that's more happened since on. then. So um, let's hop right into it. So, uh, Michelle, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. So the last time we spoke, uh, we spoke about the Mobile Jesters. Yeah. And so how's that going so far? It's going great. Uh, the season's going good. The basketball team is number two in their division. So Ooh. that's exciting. And the ladies have been doing well. If y'all would like to see their videos, they're on my page, the Dance with Shell page or the Shell Dancer page on Instagram, um, Dance W Shell, and it's okay. all together. Um, I post the videos on there. Games are only $5, mm. and I forget the address, but it's on DIP on Borkin Lane. Okay. At the Lady of Lords Church. So if you want to come to a game, it's $5. Um, I think it's two dollars for kids. It's a good time, you know. You need something to do on a Saturday night, come out to the game. Next game is December fourteenth and December twenty first, so Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Well, Michelle, uh like I said last time, we talked about a bunch of things. So this interview is not gonna be our typical uh standard questions that we normally ask. We're just kinda shooting from the hip with a few new questions that we're touching on. Okay. So, um, and some of these a little bit more personal, intimate questions just to get to know you okay. more specifically because we, we know <laughs> about Dance with Shao, but we need to know Miss Shao herself. So, Miss Shao, uh, just to start us off, what were you like as a child? I was quiet and obedient. <laughs> and um, I just didn't like trouble. Like, I was straight to the point. If my teacher said do this, I did it. Okay. I had friends. They was like, don't do it. And I was like, okay, you don't do it, but I'm still your friend, but you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> like, I was just really obedient and a little headstrong, too, with being obedient. So it's kind of weird. I'm a Taurus, so. Oh, you're stubborn. Is I was you're stubborn in being <laughs> obedient. Nobody could talk me out, out of, of being, being obedient. Yes. So I guess that's good. I don't know. So I guess you was a great kid, man, because I was bad. Well, I wasn't bad. I was just No, active. you already said it. <laughs> I probably was. Well, well, I was a good child because I, I didn't like the thought of disappointing my mom. Oh. Uh -huh. um, I don't think I could disappoint my dad, and I didn't like getting in trouble at school. Mm -hmm. Only thing, I, I didn't like school work for real. So mm. but I still made good grades, but I just didn't like school work. So I could have made better grades. Because I was a child that didn't do homework or projects, but still had a high CRB. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. Skirt, you, you, hold on. You didn't do homework? Mm -mm. Why not? I just didn't like it. But I listened to my teachers. Like, if they say do this, I was going to do it. But they sent me home with some homework. I was like, I already know that. It's boring. I don't want to do it. I don't feel like doing it. Luckily for me, I went from a regular school to Osha Road where we, mm -hmm. we had homework, but our focus was performing arts. So gotcha. it was more entertaining. That's funny. You were just saying how you were obedient. But when it come to homework, it was like, nah. I wasn't nah, doing it. Because <laughs> nobody was telling me. My mama wasn't the parent that was like, do your homework. Right. So I wasn't being disobedient because she didn't say do your homework. Mm. If she would have said do, I would have been like, Ugh. Right. But. I was that child that didn't, and I and it was a bad habit because I took it to high school too, but I still made good grades. Oh man! I remember uh, I was in honors classes and I mm -hmm. went to Lafleur, so I had Mr. Lovett for uh, I think it was 
pre-algebra that year because mm-hmm. he always give his speech to his students you ain't gonna make no a in here you ain't gonna make no a and i was like yeah i'm gonna make an a because i'm like really good at math and he was like no you're not and and as time went on he was like you don't even do homework you don't even do homework you ain't gonna make no a i made a mm. and i did not do no homework <laughs> how? how does that work i made a's on all my tests <laughs> oh waited gotcha my test. tests were all A's and somehow made it just balance out to A because you not you don't have no projects. Yeah. If I would have had like projects in math, but you don't have projects in math, that probably would have made me have like a B or something. But I had an A. I always have an A when I was at A and I had A, and that was my only A math. <laughs> oh, I was about to say, man, because uh, math is definitely not my strong suit. Yeah, that was Never my was. only A. I wasn't even trying. It's just I'm not that good at math. I, I think we anymore. talked about that last time. I think you were more of an algebra person mm-hmm. and hated not, geometry. Yeah. I still did good. I still made like an A or a B, mostly a B, but I didn't get why I was making a B. I just, I could, I could do what somebody tells me to do, but I, I, that don't mean I understand it. Gotcha. So like I could tutor somebody in algebra, but as soon as they want me to do geometry, I'm like, mm-hmm. Right. I'm like, I know the answer is this, but I don't know why that's the answer. That's science for me, too. Mm, I love science. I I don't like it because it's like, it doesn't remain. I'm a Taurus. We don't like change, even Ooh, though I'm used to point. change. And science change. Mm-hmm. And I don't get that. I'm like, if it's this, then why ain't this for eternity? And science is like, because things change. And I'm like, but it shouldn't. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So were you like the um, the name taker or the hall monitor like those mm-hmm. first few years in school? I was, I was, I liked it, but I hated it. I was none of that because I was so quiet. I wasn't raising my hand to be the hall monitor. I wasn't raising. I didn't like attention. I didn't want mm. any attention. But oddly, I wanted to dance and be on the stage. When I got to Osha Road and we did that first performance at Murphy on the stage in the gym, I was like. But at the same time, I don't like attention. I don't like people being like, that's such and such. A. I'm like, uh. So you like performance, but just for the sake of performance, mm-hmm. not. The rush that it gives yeah. me and that it feels good with. Not for people to be like, look at that girl. Right. I'd rather them not. <laughs> but I get you. it just comes with it. It's the same with uh, what I do now. Like. I don't like attention. I don't like the attention that I get from men. Uh, from my posts and my videos. I don't like it. Oh, I know they slide in it your It makes DM. me uncomfortable. And I'm not even talking about the weird, creepy stuff because I have the weird, creepy stuff. But I'm talking about the normal stuff that like, hey, beautiful, and oh. you're awesome. I'm like, <laughs> no, I just don't like attention. So how do you, how should, well, I'm not going to say should. How would you like someone to, I guess, compliment your work? By sharing it and say, go and take classes with her. <laughs> okay. No, I, I get no, that. I get not that. by writing me. I appreciate it, though, because mm-hmm. I know it's coming from a good place most of the time, but I don't like attention. And it was the same in high school, being a dance girl. Mm-hmm. I didn't like attention. Like, But we got attention. Right. I like the performance aspect, but I didn't like the... Uh, it was forums back then, and they would be like, should Linda Henry this? And they would talk about my best friend, Lauren Gamble this, their best friends. Should Linda's going to A&M, and Lauren's going to be a JZ, and da, da, da. And I'm like, how do you know this is so creepy? How do you know me? How do you know this is my best friend? How did you, they would find a picture of us off our, and this was, that. it wasn't even now. People, that's expected now. This was in 08 and 09. Oh, social media was just kind of Yeah, and people were doing that. And they knew our whole names. They knew that we were best friends. They found pictures of us. They knew our whole life story. And I'm just like... And and the same happened in college, too. Like, people were talking about me like they knew me. They was like, oh, she's going to be captain and this and that. And she came from this school. And they... And I was like... Who is these people? And then they was, at that time, I go by Shell now, but at mm. that time, 
only the band called me Shao and like some close friends. And they were like, Shao this. And I'm like, who is this? Literally, I didn't ne- I never called myself Shao on social media back then. Like, how do they know to even call me this? They talking like they know me. Mm. It was just so weird to me. I don't know. No, that is that is weird, especially getting introduced that way. Just it was just weird. People and, having a profile on you already. Yeah. So I can only imagine if I if that was happening now, I would be even more creeped out because I would probably have like so many followers and stuff because that's how those dancers are now. They have like they're known as a public figure mm-hmm. on social media because they have over twenty thousand followers, fifty thousand. Some of them have like seventy, eighty thousand followers and People just like invade their space and want to know everything about them, and that's just so weird to me. No, it it is uh should be like a barrier between. There is no barrier. No, I agree. I agree. There's no barrier. And I, I and I that's what you. kind of bothers me. Like, I love what I do, and fortunately, if you love what you do and you do it for long enough, a lot of people will get to know you, and sometimes that carries on. By social media being here, that carries on to the world getting to know you because so many people are putting you out there. Um, and that makes for people to be like nitpicking about you. Mm-hmm. And I want to know this, who she dating, this and that, this and that. You know, she has a child. No, she don't. She don't ever post it. Yes, she do. You know, I don't. Ugh, it makes me, it's cringy to me that people are so interested in somebody's life it's like why like we have our own lives so why not be interested in your life instead of mine it's weird no it it makes sense uh because it's almost like they view shell as like a a public figure slash entertainer i'm not so. saying that i'm viewed like that now i don't know <laughs> I, I would say so I don't see if people say that sometimes, and I'm like, I don't think so. And somebody's like, Yes, you are. People know who you are, and I'm like, mm-hmm. Don't nobody know who I am. When I go places, don't nobody know who I am. And people are like, Yes, they do. Like, cause I was walking with my friend, and he was like, That those two girls just knew you. They looked, they pointed, and, and I'm like, No, they didn't. I didn't, cause I you don't pick it up. I don't see anything. Mm-hmm. Like I'm like tunnel vision <laughs> when I'm like shopping. People be like, you was being rude. I didn't see you. Like, I'm just trying to pick up my noodles. That's it. <laughs> I, was, I didn't see you. Shout out to them noodles. The oodles and noodles. You know? <laughs> the chili flavor. Hey. <laughs> hey. They don't know about them cups. They don't know. Man, the hot and spicy chicken cup. <laughs> oh, see, I can't do the hot and spicy one because I don't do the spicy. The hot and spicy chicken cup is so good. And make my nose run. That's why I don't That's good. It. Get it out. <laughs> All right. Well, going back to school, uh, I I always say there's always usually a teacher that kind of challenges you, just like the math teacher did. Uh, was there any other teacher that kind of challenged you to work your craft? Um, or do you have a favorite teacher? All of my dance teachers, honestly, <laughs> they all saw something in me that I didn't know or recognize. Um, even... I, I have to even go back to Osha Road, Miss Dunn. I don't know where Miss Dunn is today. I wish I could find her, but I don't know her first name. But she, mm-hmm. um, I came in in the second grade at Osha Road, and she immediately put me up front and gave me, like, spots and dance stuff. And I was like, I didn't think nothing of it. I was seven. But I, other kids apparently thought something of it. Um Miss Goodrich at Dunbar, she saw something in me and she put me in like the lead company, made me captain of it with along with other people I did, like Mallory. Oh, no, Mallory wasn't captain, but she might as well be him. <laughs> but like Brianna, um, Danielle, all of them. Um, Miss V from Dunbar, the ballet teacher, she I took ballet one year and Miss V was like, Where did you dance? And I was like, here <laughs> she's like no where you dance outside of school i was like i've never danced outside of school she's like okay you're on the company and she saw she trained me she trained me really well she saw something in me i didn't think i was a good ballet dancer at all and she did then after that miss joanne christopher from the floor 
Miss Chris. I always love Miss Chris. Mm -hmm. She she taught us performing, like to step outside the box, going from dancing at Dunbar to dancing at LaFleur. She taught us to dance with soul. A lot of her choreography, and yes, she was a white lady, but a lot of her choreographer choreography was soulful mm -hmm. and it it kind of complimented us young black kids dancing. It wasn't her trying to make us fit what she grew up doing. She was making something for us. Okay. Um, so we did a lot of kind of like Negro spiritual stuff and then we did um, just soulful things. It was never anything bland. It all had meaning behind it. And, of course, she had us do a lot of Alvin Ailey. Um, and Miss Kirksey. Uh, I still talk to Miss Kirksey. That mm -hmm. was my last teacher. And Mr. Maynardy. Mr. Maynardy is just like, oh, he was the best. Mr. Maynardy. He opened our eyes. Like, he taught us some things that we did not appreciate at the time. <laughs> I'm sorry on all of the behalf of everybody you taught while you was at LaFleur, but he was amazing. He was amazing. He made me open my eyes to, uh, he made me step outside of my box. Mm. I wouldn't be the dancer I am today if I never took under him. I can say that for sure. But yeah, that was a, some of the teachers. I was affected by a few teachers, but it's mainly my dance teachers. Okay. When did you decide that dance was what you wanted to do as an adult? When I was 10 years old, I said I was going to be a choreographer. And look at me now. Hey, a choreographer. You did it. <laughs> I didn't expect to really do it, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, 10, the age of 10. Well, uh, I think at my age of 10, I wanted to be a scientist. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you kind of are, because did you say you do computer work? I do. I do. So that's kind of science, right? Yeah, it's a field. Yeah, I guess you're right. To you, me, you it's sense. science. I don't get it. Right. I don't understand how it works. I'm like, <laughs> how do people put some chips things together and then internet? <laughs> like, how do you Man. put these things together that I can talk to somebody that's thousands of miles away from me? I don't understand. Right, right. I'm glad that y'all understand, but I don't. Well, you know, I don't understand how, I guess, you could just create a routine that for the life of me escapes me really yeah so you see that's just like we're looking at the it, same mirror just for two yeah. different angles so i thought that anybody i thought everybody looked at people dancing and be like okay anybody can do that mm -mm. That's I like, how, I, how you do that what made you put that to that what made you turn that way like Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. interesting. I didn't think people thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. I, I can't dance. I know. So. I think about it like that when I see like choreography that just mind blow. I'm like, what made them think to do that? It'd be the simplest thing. It'd be something like with their finger. And I'm like, whoa, what made them do that right there? Like, what made that come about? But for me, I feel like my choreography kind of basic. I'm trying to get better with my choreography. So, I don't, I feel like sorry. I feel like nobody. Mm -hmm. I feel like nobody looks at my choreography like what made her do that? That's so that's so dope. Like what made her think of that? I feel like it's basic, and I kind of just repeat the same moves. <laughs> well, I try to do outside the box stuff. I'll say this for you to have the following that you have so far, and the support of people that you have, and the followers. Excuse me. I, I think I, I have to disagree. I, I understand what you're saying because you have tunnel vision. Yeah. You're, you're very goal oriented. <laughs> but there are plenty of people on the wayside of you just in awe of what you're doing, yeah. especially uh, with the gestures, with the younger ladies. Like when I follow your page, like real talk, I make sure I go like even share in some cases. Um, so it don't seem creepy, you know, be sharing. <laughs> I don't of, think it's creepy. You know, I, I just I, I'm, I'm an overthinker. So that's why. <clears throat> but um I, I think it's amazing. I really do. Because, like, what you see is basic. is something I couldn't do even if I tried. Like, even when I was at A&M, learning a new stroll for me <laughs> <laughs> was crazy. I had to practice that. It's like, okay, y'all, bear with me. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to tell you, like, when we practiced our probate steps and everything, that took time for me. So, where you might get it naturally, 
I had to practice, practice. Like, yeah. okay, focus. And see, in my head, it's like, somebody's like, you made up that dance. And, that, and I'm like, I made up that dance in like two seconds. Like, I literally make up. I don't. And I feel guilty about that. I don't do take. Mean? Some people take. I've, I've watched choreographers and like listen to them talk about their process. Some of them dream it and wake up and write down moves. For the life of me, I cannot write down moves. I go back and read and be like, what? <laughs> what was I talking about? Chasse, what? Chasse, <laughs> hip, hip. I be like, I no. I just, I have to make up stuff on the spot. And um, I just, it just flows. But other people are like, okay, I took a month to make this dance up. I took two days to make this up. And I'm like... I only took 10 minutes to make that routine up. That's crazy. But I think that's not good because I feel like those other people put so much time and dedication into it. And although, yes, I hear a song, it flows out. I feel like maybe I should go back and tweak some things or change this. Or, But it's like I hear a song, boom, 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 it's done. Like, I don't spend... At home, I don't spend a lot of time on choreography. I have a lot of choreography hour, and I got the gestures, and then I have my little girl's team choreography. And then, of course, I post videos here and there, mm-hmm. um, and that's me making a choreography. But I don't sit at home and make a choreography. I don't. And I feel guilty about it because I know other people are at, at home like, okay, one, two, what I want to do right here? And I'm just, like, chilling at home. But then when I go... I listen to it. I'm like, y'all stretch and practice what I just did. And I listen to it. And I just like listen to the song about a few times. And I'm like, okay, come on, learn this. And mm. I don't know. Like, I feel guilty that I do it that way sometimes. I don't feel guilty. I think for some people, they're naturally attuned to do things like a little bit easier than others. So I think you just have more of a knack for it, you know. Yeah. Well, I've been making up dances since I was 10. So... <laughs> They they weren't necessarily good dancers. I thought they was good dancers for a ten year old though. You know, I would let them. We was right. making up dances to uh, Destiny's Child and Three L W and stuff. Ooh, you know, Sierra. Took me back, though. <laughs> I was Three like, I, I feel like it was pretty good for a ten year old. You know, but I just want my choreography to grow. Mm. I don't want anything to ever look the same. Which for the gestures, I can say. That so far the two dancers have not looked anything like each other, so I'm okay with that. Okay. But I theme stuff with them, so that makes nothing look the same. Okay. So we have a Michael Jackson sideline that don't look nothing like the Missy Elliott sideline, mm. and that don't look nothing like the uh, Port City Second Line or the hey. Jukebox sideline, and so Shout they out all look second different. lines. Yeah. Y'all need to let us perform with y'all because we have a dance to y'all song. Plug. Thank you. I love that track. They just played it. I was at Lit Cigar Lounge uh, Sunday with a friend of mine. And um, they just, the DJs out of nowhere just started playing it. Everybody was jamming to it. The Hey Poor City. Mm hmm. I love it. I love it so much. The first time I heard it, I was like, I love Mardi Gras. Yes. I love band. Mm-hmm. So that's I'm all just, it is. Band, Mardi Gras, and that's what it rapping. gave me. Right. And then they put some rap over it. Mm-hmm. I was like, yep, I love this. But I'm like, I'm trying to get y'all. Hey, plug. <laughs> y'all seen it. Plug. If you did see it, go see it. I mean, I put some dedicated choreography to it now. Hey, Port City. You hey. Know? I love my city. I love Mardi Gras. You know, come on. Shout out to Mobile and Mardi Gras 2020. Yes, down. I can't wait. Man, I've been excited. So um, I've been excited for 2020 Mardi Gras since 2019 Mardi Gras. Come on with it. And since 2018 Mardi Gras, because I just love Mardi Gras. Man. It's my favorite time I need to year. get the calendar, because I, I don't know when it exactly starts. February 1st, I believe. Ooh, I'm ready. Me too. I am ready. I'm trying to be in a... The Mamga Parade one year, probably you next should. year. I, I would love, I would I, have loved for it to have been this year because it's 2020 and yeah. then 2020. But I don't want to be in any parades, but my little girls want to march really bad. So Aww. I want to be at the parade happy. 
Turn it up. Because gotcha. I marched in the band all them years. I don't want to be in a parade. Over it. <laughs> yeah. I want to be at the parade. I want to be the drunk person yelling at the barricade. You hey. better do it. You better. I see you. All right, That's then. me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to. I ain't trying to march. Right. <laughs> Oh, I ain't trying to be on the float either. I, I want to catch the be stuff on the float. On the float. I, I want to be I the will, one. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it one day. I think um, the Jesters are talking about getting a float. Man. I don't know what pray. I know they said something about Trinity Garden, but. Mm, yo. So, now, that that one be jumping, too. I have never been to the Trinity Garden. Party. I went don't last take, year. Don't take my black card. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> no, listen. Last year was my first time in like 10 years. I've and never it, been it was ever. jumping. Hey, I heard. I heard. Gotta come out. Gotta come out. Gotta come out. I was suspect of the area too. Not gonna lie. And uh, last oh, year, someone did get shot. Area. Oh, lady uh, shot a dude. That- <laughs> no lie. I kid you not. If you're listening to this interview, <laughs> go look on the news. Last year, Trinidad Gardens um, Mardi Gras parade, someone got shot in the neck. In the neck. Yeah. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you edit out me scratching my throat. I got you, folks. Uh, Get it, get it. You got tissue and stuff over here. Let me know if you need some more water. Whew. It's burning bad. You want me to let, like, let some air in here or something? Because mm, none of that going to help. I just when I feel medicine, so bad. When the medicine kick in, I'll be okay. <laughs> All right. I feel so bad. We should have crushed it up or something. But um, Oh, yeah. That would have helped. Yeah. That See, that's why I like liquid stuff. Because it's just oh, gone man. in and... That's why I take liquid cold medicine. I need it to go ahead. And I don't want to take no daytime anything. I want it to. You trying to be comatose. Yes. I want to be knocked out because Mm -hmm. I already have a hard time sleeping. So when I'm sick or something or something like that, that's my excuse to go to sleep. I ain't mad. (laughs) I'm like, nighttime. Right. Thanks. I'm not mad. None drowsy. Get that out of here. I need the drowsy. Thank you. Well, I ain't want you to have you. Looking like you, uh... <laughs> I'm used to, uh... Um, chopped and screwed over here. No, I'm used to doing stuff with drowsy medicine in me because I have to take allergy medicine so much. Oh, yeah. You and I that. only buy the uh, medicine that actually makes you drowsy. At first, when I first started taking it, I couldn't do nothing. If I took that medicine, I had to go home from work because it knocked me out. But now I can just, like, I get I, the drowsiness to hit me, and then next thing you know, I'm just kind of working through it. Mm. I'm still awake. You know what I need to try? And, um, excuse me, I was chewing gum. Uh, but you ever heard of a neti pot? Mm-mm. It's like this little teapot looking thing with a little spout. You put it in your nose and you turn your head. I want to try something like that. I want to. Tr- they say it's a nasal rinse, basically. I it. want a nasal rinse so bad because I feel like when my allergy is doing that, and if I do that, it'll be good. I'll That's be what good. I've seen. Like this is gonna sound gross. I've seen people drained. Yeah, basically they had sinus infections and they were congested, so they did the neti pot and they blew their nose and it, the mucus and stuff came Just, out. Just I need to do flushed that. out. I need to do that so bad. But you know, like, that's what I do during ear infections. I do that sweet oil, the warm sweet oil. In the ear. And it goes straight through. Because, you know, an ear infection normally lasts about a week. Right. Anytime I have an ear infection or start even getting a symptom of an ear infection, I do the warm sweet oil. And the next, with, well, no, within hours, it's gone. The next day is nothing. I've never had an ear infection, knock on wood. I but it. if you do ever get one, get some warm sweet oil, drop it in your ear, you'll be good. It ain't going to last. That's crazy. I don't know how it do. I just know it works. Somebody told me to do it. They said their grandma used to do it. And I tried it. And with that hours, I was better. Mm. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you, love. Sounded this good. Is actually stuff in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That first time I, w- I wasn't even doing anything out. All right. You went now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you said for now? I said I feel a little better. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Hopefully it's kicking in because usually it dissolves pretty quickly. I hope actually. so. So hopefully it gets you feeling right. Um, I'm going to skip this. 
this question here come back to it a little bit later but this next one uh, do you have like a favorite birthday or like a favorite gift you've received growing up um i'm not big on gifts really not your I love language huh i like gifts yeah it's definitely not my love language no i like gifts so i mean hey <laughs> Cash app or right now. <laughs> Cash app, Dan Shell. You know, I love gifts, but that's not what makes me appreciate. Like, uh, actually, my favorite birthday so far was this past year, um, because my other birthdays I just can't really remember them. I always have sucky birthdays for oh, some reason. I'm sorry. Always. Uh, but this this past year, I said, you know what? I've been having a good year. This year started off great. And I'm going to celebrate my birthday. I never celebrate my birthday. So I was like, I'm just going to have me a little small dinner. I had a little dinner at Logan's. Cool. And I was like, nobody probably going to come. That's why I, probably, that's why I never throw myself a birthday party. Because I'm like, ain't nobody going to come. Mm -hmm. And people came. And people brought me gifts. And I was just like, oh, my God. Like, this birthday was so good. This past birthday was so good. And I actually dressed up because I hate dressing up. As you can see, I only have lipstick on right now. Like, I don't like doing makeup and all that. Like, I had to force myself. I tried to I tried to force myself to do makeup for this. It's like I'm being a camera. Put some foundation on. Dude, you're fine. <laughs> but um, that, was, that was my best birthday. So, my 27th slash 25th birthday. Because this was my 25th again for the second time. Oh, birthday. I was like, I, was uh, I turned 25 for the second time. For the third time. Oh. The third time. But my, my 27th birthday. So far, it's my best birthday. But I'm claiming that this, my 28th birthday is going to be the best birthday. Because, you know, I want to go see Megan at the hang. Hey, so, shout know, out to Megan. And Doja. You know, I want to see her too. I love Doja Cat. I feel like she slept on. Low key. I, she's very slept on. And I'm so surprised I didn't know that that song on the radio was hers. Which one? Um, Juicy. Really? That's her. I thought it was Dan No, I'm Lake. surprised you didn't know. No, I didn't know because I, I like some of her music and I listen to it. Like some of her songs are on like my playlist. Mm -hmm. But she has these different sounds. Mm -hmm. So she she's, does. She sounded like Danny Lay. The girl Good that, point. yeah, she mm -hmm. sounded like her. And in my head, I'm like, why is, and she says Doja in the song, but yeah. I just didn't pay no attention. I'm like, why Danny Lay talking about her booty being big? That girl don't have no big booty. Then it was like Doja Cat was like, makes sense. I love Doja I knew Cat. I liked this song for a reason because I like <laughs> Doja Cat. Do you have like a particular type of music that you like to dance to? Like as far as like your creative process? Oh, um, ratchet music. I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love ratchet. I love, okay, so I don't like listening to rap, but I, I love dancing because when I started Seduction with Shia, I was only doing like slow. And then... Ryan and VC, Ryan Shine, well, she's Ryan Day now, and uh, VC, mm -hmm. uh, they was like, we really want to come to your class, but we want to do a request. And I was like, okay. And they was like, can you please do stir fry? And I was like, this is a seduction class. What am I supposed to do to stir fry? Like, you know, seduction's like slow, and, mm -hmm. you know. I'm like, what am I gonna do? And then, 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 and so I just started playing a song, and then it came out, and I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm I'm actually gonna probably post this video later too. Hey. It's old, but I um I wanted to do some throwbacks to promote Seduction with Shell coming back in January. Tag me to it so I can link it to the video. Okay, I will. But um, yeah. So the choreography came out, and after that class, and that was like one of my biggest classes. Uh, and I think I said I'm doing stir fire choreography. I had some girls come 
from Mississippi to the class and everything. And so afterwards, my mom took the class and she was like, you know, I really like that. Like, this was my favorite class. Uh, a lot of people came and I liked what you made up. Like, it seemed like they liked it. And so I was like, okay, so people like this. And I think I did like one more other kind of like rap song. And I was like, okay, Trap Seduction. Mm. So then I didn't like the thought of Trap Seduction at first because it was out of my comfort zone. I'm not real, real ratchet like that. But it's like, that's what people like the most when mm -hmm. I do trap seduction. And it became my favorite. So when I hear a nice little rap song, I'll be like, okay, I want to dance to that. I want to dance to that. Yeah. I, I, um, oh, in Tank. I love dancing to Tank. I can see that. Because I, see I that. like doing seduction. Don't get me wrong, seduction is not my actual genre. It has became my genre, I guess. But, you know, um, jazz, ballet, and majorette, those are my genres. Uh, and lyrical. Uh, well, I have a few genres, but I added seduction, and it was it was so out of my comfort zone. I was just like, ugh. So every time I added to it, I was like, ugh. But now it's like my favorite. I kind of like miss doing it. And I'm mm. like, okay, it's time for seduction with Chef. People been asking me for a whole year when I'm starting doing classes this time. All right. So, sidetrack question. What's your favorite guilty pleasure? Besides cilantro. It's <laughs> kind of go into the eating. I love to eat. <laughs> That's why I can't stop gaining weight. Oh, I child, love stop. to eat. I'm so serious. Stop. Stop it. Stop That's it. That's why I can't stop gaining weight. I love to eat. I just, it's like I have no type of, uh, what is it called? I can't think of the word because my mind is all bubbled up from my allergies. But uh, discipline. I have no discipline when it comes to eating anymore. I used to be very disciplined. But man. Dude, there's nothing wrong with you. But, I mean, it may not be nothing wrong with me, but I still can't stop gaining weight. <laughs> because, like, in this year alone, I probably have gained 20 pounds. Like, in this year alone. I'll say this, but with you dancing, your body requires more because you're burning so many calories in it what you do. It don't require all that I eat, though. <laughs> it requires more healthy, but not all. It don't require the Eminem bars. If me oh. eating a whole Eminem bar at one time, and it don't require. The good thing about me is I do have balance because I love fruit. So, mm -hmm. but I may be overeating the fruit, and I I love healthy stuff. I love vegetables, but I also love all the bad stuff too. Mm. And I will overeat. Only time I don't overeat overeat oddly is when I go out to eat. I cannot stuff myself out to eat for some reason. That's why I don't go to buffets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to waste my money. I'm getting like one plate and I'm done. Yeah, but at home, I cook. And I'm like, ooh, that was good. I did good. I eat by five plates. Not five. Plates. I got but you. But three. I really <laughs> would eat. I eat two or three plates. I really would. What What do you like? What's your favorite dish to cook then? Uh, beef and mm -hmm. beef stew. Mm. I love beef. I'm more of a seafood, gumbo. I like to cook person. all that, but my fave... I love making beefaroni. It's whew, it'd be so good. It's just the perfect mixture, especially when I'm not lazy and I actually use fresh tomatoes. And I always use fresh onion, but if I use fresh tomato and stuff in it, it just mm -hmm. have this amazing flavor. Um, but even when I don't, it tastes. I I love making beefaroni, and I love making beef stew. Like. Those carrots, those potatoes. Ooh. It's been sitting a while too. Like you, when you it's better, come back to it's it. It's better as leftovers. Yes, indeed. Because it's just all soaked up. Mm -hmm. it's just, I, love I like mine with a little bit of potato Don't in it Don't get me too. wrong. I love it fresh. But nah, like you said. You get it that next day, cuz. That next day. But it, nine times a ten. What <laughs> if it lasts? Especially <laughs> if, I let, if I let somebody know I cooked it and they come and eat some. Mm. Ain't no more. Dang. I, um. I recently made a banana pudding. I haven't made, I only make it like once a year because that is my favorite and dessert. You just, Look, <laughs> that I, be me. My, my ass, I go and get a spoonful 
Like every single time. Like I'd be like, oh, okay, that was good. 30 minutes later, get another spoonful. 30 minutes later, get another spoonful. Well, at least it's a spoonful because when I like something, I'm just going to fix the whole bowl. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back for another whole bowl. Like I really, I overdo it. I overdo it so much. Like I just overeat. Like. I love food. I love food. Food is just the best. Food is also a love language, I feel. so. Food is my love language. <laughs> food is definitely. Food and touch. Well, mm. like I said, I'm a Taurus. So, I, anything that appeals to the senses, I love it. So, if you give me something that feels good, I love that. If you Like, if you give me some silk sheets, I'm like, oh, my God, you bought me some sheets. I love this. <laughs> If you buy me buy me some like air freshener or some like or some I love candles buy me some candles or some uh, wax melts I'm like oh my god you love me don't you <laughs> like anything that appeals to the senses I like to eat I like to smell things that smell good I like to feel things that feel good uh, only sense that don't really the two is sight and hearing like I don't really care about seeing things per se because I don't I don't know like I'm I'm okay with seeing like regular stuff mm. especially if it just coordinates like I'm not a person that needs like fancy fancy things but if it smells good feels good tastes good I'm happy mm. I'm really happy I'm, I'm relaxed I'm more of a acts of service person I like to do things together really like projects and stuff like, and see, uh, I don't like doing that stuff. I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm like, do you want me to do what? I just want to lay here. Just please let me lay here. Yeah. For me to be a dancer, people wouldn't think I'm as lazy as I am. Because <laughs> I'm just like, you want to you wanna go on a date? Oh. Really? You don't like going on dates? I like going on dates, but then when I'm get there, I'm like, I'm tired. I wanna go. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> like, you want to you wanna go dancing? But you're a dancer. I don't feel like doing it right now. I do it to make money. I don't want to do it now. I, I don't do it for fun anymore. I'm just oh. kidding. I do still do it for fun. That's but. crazy. I just had a deja vu just now. Really? Yeah. That's funny. That's that was so weird. With exactly like what you just said. I can believe it. I had deja vu all the time. That's crazy. <laughs> I just sorry if it interrupted the flow. It just threw me off. Um, but yeah, I, I love like doing stuff together. And like, it's funny you say you're not really a sight person. I love painting. That's why all this art is around me. Oh, I absolutely okay. love painting. That is But you know what? So I was looking at that, uh, Marilyn Monroe and I was like, I was about to mess with you and be like, that should be Dorothy Dandridge, not Marilyn Monroe. I'm so happy you said that. I mean, it just should be. No, I'm so happy you said like, that. It's like, she's lit and... Why she don't have no paintings? I want her this. Actually, you see in the lower right corner over there, that's what I'm starting on. <gasps> really? <laughs> yeah, it's just not finished. You should make me one just for fun. Yay, thanks. All right. <laughs> okay. I like how you did that. Um, but I yeah. got obsessed with Dorothy Dangerous at one point. I was oh like, she's God. just so beautiful. She, she was so bad. She was amazing. Um, she was the so reason pretty. Marilyn is up there. I love those two because they were best friends. Uh-huh, those two together. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't like talking about them too much because as a woman, it makes me feel a little sad because their lives, their lives are so tragic because of men, because of their relationships with men. That's why I have them up uh, because Marilyn was the first bad girl. She she was yeah. first playboy. Um Messing with a president. Right. Messing with the Russian president. Messing with the president brother. Sitting in between like a bunch of guys at a table smoking a cigarette. When when she when women were right, she she was the mold breaker. Yeah. And Dorothy did the same thing, but more in the black community, when she would go to the white hotels, she'd mm -hmm. get in the pool. You know, and it, it only thing I didn't like about Dorothy is that I feel like she had that bad experience with her black husband. Yeah. And she only dated white men after yeah. that. And I'm just like. Trauma, they, man. I was like, they both were horrible to you. So right. why only date white men after that? 
I mean, I, I understand if she wanted it because of status or something. But a lot of black men did have status back then. They just, the law wasn't on their side. Right. But they had people on their side. You know, like if they wanted to go somewhere, they could. Right. If they knew the right people there. And they did know some of the right people. But it's like she got, her husband did her so bad that she just was like, okay. Apparently, she was like, I'm only dating white men. And they was doing her wrong. And then she was dating married white, white men. Man. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, gosh. I, I I relate to that because I know a few men who dated black women, got burned, and was like, I'm only going to date white women. But and why? So, of, but it's so many different races. Like I, see I agree. I see if you say, I'm not dating black women anymore. But why? But why, why say I'm only dating white women why not be like i'm just not dating black women but now we see you with a white woman then we see you with an indian woman then we see you with a mexican but yeah like i don't i don't like when it's like i'm either doing black or white right and i'm letting you know i'm not doing go black. right i mean yeah it's so many others that you could date Instead of saying I'm on, because it seemed like you're being spiteful then. Yes, that's exactly. So what I mean. see, like I said, I see if you say, okay, I ain't dealing with this this race. I'm dealing with all the other races. I can accept that more than being like, well, I'm only doing white. Because I mean, if that's the case, like they suck too. Right, and, they're there. And I'm pretty sure they're the terrible Asian, people the everywhere. Asian, <laughs> right. right, I'm pretty sure the Asians suck too, and I, like you know. I feel you. I feel you. But I'm, I'm glad somebody knew. I've said Dorothy Dandridge before to someone, and their response was, don't she make cookies or something? And I was like, what? I'm over. I, never mind. I'm over it. <laughs> don't put some respect on Dorothy Dandridge. That's Matter what fact, I would say. There's a movie. Uh, With Halle Berry. Halle Berry, sure was. She did a great job, I feel. Yeah, oh my she God. She did a great job. Watching that movie, I felt like she was Dorothy. Yes. Honestly. I honestly felt like she was Dorothy. Um, I want you know when they were. I, I want to be kind of like Dorothy at times, not not all the way. I'm talking about like when I'm channeling like my sexy. Yeah, she was really. Sexy. She was bad. She was. She was. Bad. She was I'm the gonna, first. If, if you're watching this, I've just uploaded a picture next to Shell of Dorothy Dandridge. She was beautiful. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can do that. Post post oh, editing, I'm a beast. You can't put her by me. She's she's way prettier than me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, they would not. Wait till the end of the video, then you'll see a picture. Yeah, because it'll be like beauty, and then don't do that. Don't look. compare. Don't compare yourself. Hey, you're, look, you're beautiful, Michelle. Don't thank you, do you that. but I don't know about Dorothy Dandridge. I don't know because she was just woo. She, she was gorgeous. That there's a picture of her and um, there was a scene in that movie actually. Of Dorothy and Marilyn sitting under a piano, just sitting there, just being silly. Mm-hmm. I want that picture so bad, and I can't find it. You can't find it. I cannot a find a fake it. of it or anything. Mm-mm. And there's another picture of Marilyn where she's leaning over a skyscraper, smoking a cigarette. I want that one too. I found it, but they wanted like a hundred and something dollars to print it in HD. I'm like, I'm not for them. I they like just, Marilyn, but I don't like her that much. They both just died so young. It makes me sad. Scary. They died so young. Mm-hmm. And in their prime. Mm-hmm. I was just like... I'll say that they were killed yeah. in their prime. Because, yeah. I don't yeah. believe either one of them just died. Sleep pills yeah. and all. I don't yeah, be- whatever. Cause. I just don't believe it. Yeah. It was too convenient of a situation for and, them. And the way they made pills. the movies... They it, it was convenient because they made it like, okay, they went through all this with these men. They got depressed. They overdosed. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, nah, cause, sure. If yeah. you say so. Because mm-hmm. Dorothy had just oh, got, got another role. movie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that girl wasn't going to kill herself. Maybe after the movie. <laughs> Not before the movie. She had something to look forward right. to. She, she was and I'm sorry, I just it. don't think Marilyn was that unhappy. Mm-mm. I just don't think she, she was, was great. that happy. She was great with life. She was doing what she wanted. Yeah, because, I mean, they could try to act like she was brokenhearted over these certain men, but come on now. She was a player. She was not that brokenhearted. Mm-hmm. She might have had her feelings hurt a little bit, but you could tell the type of woman she was that even if she did have, at, at this point, I ain't talking mm-hmm. about in the beginning, at this point, if she did have her feelings hurt, she had backup. Yeah. And she'll go and be with the next bag, you know? Mm-hmm. My aunt reminds me of Marilyn a lot. 
I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dangerous women. That's oh, all okay. I can say. Okay. And so, that's why she was probably killed. She was a dangerous yeah, woman. Yeah, somebody and, probably and fell in love with her. And men don't like that. Yeah. They do not like that. Women in power scares not, them. Especially back then. Mm-hmm. And especially a, a white man, because ain't nothing over a white man to a white man. So right. you going to really, you know, treat me like I'm nothing? You know. Mm-hmm. You know. We're going deep. I like it. <laughs> Shoot. All right. So another question, what was something that you were told as a child that you didn't exactly get then, but as you grew into an adult, it turned out to be more true than you realized? Never say never. Mm. My mom always say that. Like, I think I just said it like once and she was like, my stepmama always said never say never because there's a lot of things I said I would never do it. Look at me now. And when she said that, I was like. I'm I'm a little stubborn than I was a child. And I was like, I don't know. It's, you know, it's some things that, but then I kind of, I really did listen. I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to try not to say never because like she said, it may change. But as I became adult and adult, I realized that I have changed so much. And some things that I would have said never to, it's definitely not a never anymore. Mm. Like, so it's the never say never. I could feel that. Uh, I I grew up an introvert, and I was thinking I'd never interview people. Right. Like, uh, it was to a point where uh, I used to watch the news as a kid because I loved hearing the news people interview people. But I was like, I, I never you, do that. I never do that. Man. I never do that. Yeah, I am. I think I said that, like, once my mom was like, don't say that. And I was like, I pretty much believe this is how I will always be. But if she say never, say never, and she actually experienced it there she must have a point and, mm. what's funny about that I think that applies to positivity and negativity uh-huh, both yeah because it's a lot of things that I never thought I would do when I was a child that I have done that's actually amazing mm-hmm. like some of the things I'm doing now some things I wanted to do but I thought I would never do right so never say never yeah, yeah. basically it that's crazy. Mm. I, yeah, I have some things that I'm not going to say on camera that I've experienced that I said I would never do. And I, yeah, I had to, had to go to God about. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> what is, um, we, we all deal with loss in our own separate ways. You know, losing a family member is never easy. So uh, what is a loss uh, or a death in the family that you've experienced? Well, and it may not even be like in biological family, just someone that you know that kind of changed you. Um, fortunately for me, I don't experience loss a lot. Um, I don't know. My family don't experience death a lot. Mm. Everybody's just still kind of here. But, um, I say my great grandma when I was in the sixth grade and see, that was like so long ago. Like, but that was really sad to me because I my great grandma watched me a lot so I was like really close under her but it's it bothers me a little bit because since all those years have passed I can't really remember her as much and mm-hmm. it's, we don't have lots of pictures of her and I mean we talk about her a little bit but um basically yeah but my family don't experience death a lot so I don't have to grieve a lot Mm. which I'm happy about but I mean I have lost love like I was in love and they weren't in love and Mm. that hurt it that that was really painful want to talk about a little more Oh, uh, not really. Oh, okay. I'm just saying you brought it up, you know. Because he might watch know. this and be like, ah, she talking about me. I mm. still don't want her. Well, like, you don't have to <laughs> give names. I just, just the experience. No, I'm saying just that I'm talking about it. He Uh-oh. probably know I'm talking about him. But then again, he might not because he felt like I didn't show him that. So, I don't mm. know. I'm not. Gore, this year kind of taught me that some things that I thought I was good at expressing, I'm not. And mm. I, I had to, if you hear something so much, if somebody saying, you don't show me this, or you don't do this, 
sometimes you have to just listen. Even though you think you're showing them, you might not be showing them. You may not be that good at showing it. So that kind of was, I learned a lot of my flaws this year. But not in a bad way, not in a beat myself up way. Mm -mm. In a growth. Yeah, in a growth way. Like, okay, you can work on that and you can work on this. And, And losing that love made me work on it for the future because it hurt it so bad losing them over just something like that instead of, you know, something serious. It was like cheating, fighting or something like that. Like we literally never fought, but he's like, you don't love me. You don't care for me like that. You don't even show it. Like you could care less. And I'm like, what? Clearly you don't feel what I feel in the inside, but you know, that made me like grow and be like, you know, I can't, I can't fault somebody for feeling how they feel. That mm-hmm. was his truth. So, obviously, I didn't show him. I thought I showed him, but like you was talking about love language, I didn't show him in his language. And I didn't take the time to learn his language because I still don't know it. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I, today, I still would not know how to show him. So. Can I be transparent with you as well in, in that mm-hmm. aspect? I appreciate you saying that. Um, (laughs) No, I'm being real. I'm being real. Um, I come from dating a generation of women that no matter what happened, it was always you, not me. Mm -hmm. And you admitting that, you know, I wasn't the best fit because I wasn't doing X, Y, Z. That's really big because people can tend to cater the narrative of the relationship to make them to be the good guy and the other person the bad guy. I feel like uh, with us, it was no bad guy, no good guy. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we still, we don't talk to each other. But if if we ran into each other, it would be no hard feelings. It would be, he wouldn't be mad at me. And he always say that. Like, he supports me. Like, if I, if we were, like, on each other's social media, he would be posting my stuff. But it's like, it just didn't work. Yeah. And like I said, even this to this day, I don't know his love language. I don't mm. know it. And that was somebody I loved, but I didn't know his love language. And um, I'm pretty sure he didn't know mine either because it was a lot of things that I felt that, you know, and I couldn't really get through to him with. But it was never, it was never tension with it. It just was like a conversation and then, okay, but... You know, I don't want to be that person that's like 45 and still stuck in my ways and thinking that everybody doing me wrong. When mm. in reality, that's not the case. So I had to open my eyes. And love will make you do that, you know. It'll make you open your eyes to say, I was wrong on that. Maybe not on everything, but I was wrong on that. So if you don't do that... Either you're very narcissistic, preach, or you didn't love them. Mm-hmm. So, all right, admit your own faults and grow from it. Yeah, that's where that's where. Oh, look at you, Michelle. Kudos to you on that, man. That's what's up. <laughs> I'm still single though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm, I'm growing though. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I wish you the best. I, with you looking at it in that aspect, we talked in our last interview that every year it's a, what did you learn moving forward? Mm-hmm. So you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. You're fine. I don't know what that is for this year yet. Mm. Maybe we still got we'll a couple see. weeks left. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, by January 1st, I know what it is, but I don't know what it is yet. Mm. But I, I feel like it has something to do with standing my ground because mm. I had a lot of people try me this year Ooh. and I I I'm not good with confrontation I hate confrontation and I hate misunderstandings and I hate people misreading me okay. I don't like when people are like you meant this harsh thing and I know I did it it okay. actually it don't make me mad it actually makes me sad that mm. they got that from me because that wasn't my intentions. Now, if that was my intentions, I'm like, <laughs> you're right. You got it. I meant to be harsh, <laughs> and I hope it hurts you. I'm sorry. But uh, 
I saw, I had a a reading this year, an okay. astrology reading. And uh, he told me, he was like, before you get the things you want, before you get the band you want, the career you want, you got to be big. You got to be, my nose stopped up. You have to be mean. And I was like, but I don't like being mean. And he was like, it don't matter. If you don't get mean, you ain't going to get those things because you too dice. And you can't go through the world being too dice. And I was like, okay. And sure enough, with time, what he has said has been true. I mean, all of what he said been true except for one thing with the love life thing. Because he said that me and that guy would be together if me and that guy's not together. Hmm. But he said that you need to be me. That's the only way you're going to get to where you want to be and get the things you need. And in, in these last few months, I've been having people bring me out of me. And I try my best to fight it. And it's like the more I try to fight it, the worse it gets. Mm. Because at the end of the day, even if I'm not mean, they still mistreat me. And it's like, well, you might as well have been mean and got your point across and let them know not to make you be mean or not to be mean to you or not to mistreat you. So it's just been interesting. I think it may have something to do with standing my ground. And I'm not a pushover. But I put others before myself when I'm thinking of people. Like if I don't want, I will, I inconvenience myself before I inconvenience somebody else, basically. Mm, okay. And, yeah. And even if I inconvenience myself, they still do be dirty. And it's like. No, yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've been there before. Yeah. So he's, he kind of was. I'm seeing now what he mean by it. He's like, because I'm already a no BS type of person for the most part, but I hate confrontation and I hate people thinking I'm being mean if I wasn't. And I, and I always felt like, okay, if you handle things a certain way, you keep the peace. They'll keep the peace. And that's not true. Some people mm-hmm. going to disturb the peace either way it go. Yeah. So you just keep it a piece for no reason, to be honest. But yeah, I, I want to ask more questions, but I think you're being vague. Oh, I have to be. Reason. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not that open of a person, so I can't yeah, talk about an actual tell. situation. No, no, no. I, I don't mean in that aspect. I meant in a sense of was this like a business issue or like a person? Personal. Okay. Personal. That's that's what I was alluding to. But either way, I wouldn't discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Because right. I don't I don't want nobody to do that to me. Because I know I'm not perfect. I'm probably going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Mm. And I don't want them to, like, bash me, you know. Gotcha. Which, and I said I would bash them, but, you know. I feel you. No, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, a project. And uh, one of the rules is we need to be a united front. So even if we have an issue address that person or me directly Mm -hmm. so we can resolve it and even if we still disagree we can agree to that and still move forward you know so i i I understand where you're coming from and see that's how i've always been but that doesn't always work with people that's true because a lot of people are turbulent just have issues Mm -hmm. and like i give respect to what is due but i also give respect when it's not due as a so for me, yeah. So for me to not get respect when it's due, and I know I'm giving you respect, and it's not even due, that's rubbed me the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like I gave you respect anyway, and you don't even deserve yeah, you it. You were out of line. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I know what you mean. Dealt with that. Dealt with that. <laughs> All right. Um, we got way off track there. Uh, not like this is a typical interview anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, how do you start your day? Is there like a ritual or like a an order of things you have to do to have a great day start? Because I know I do. Mm-hmm. I, I, have I to. wish. Uh, so you I'm just not, hop up and just get going. I'm not super disciplined. Well, I have a daughter, so on a school day, I wake up at six forty-five. I get her ready. I take her to school. 
Then when I make it back home, I sit in the car for about 30 minutes and do my social media posts because if I go upstairs, I might not do it. <laughs> okay. um, and maybe answer emails or something. Um, and then I go in and sometimes I eat breakfast, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I soak. And just kind of like think and relax. Hold up, did um, you say soak or soak? Soak. Tub. Oh, okay. Soak. Okay. Uh, then I kind of just try to see where the day takes me because I'm not really a planner. Every once in a while I have to make myself do it though. I'm like, this is what I'm doing today. This, 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 this. Mm-hmm. But then other days, it's like if I try to plan out my day, it don't work. And right. That kind of makes me a little, uh, so I know and adjust what I want to get done in the day, but like I kind of just let the day carry me, because even when I plan my day, something major may happen that have nothing to do with my plans, and if I don't plan my day, something major happens that don't have to do with my not plans. So, right. um. Sometimes I do get in planning mode. When I have something big coming up or I feel like I'm real away from my set goals, mm-hmm. I plan my whole day. But if, I, if I'm if i kind of like, I got things flowing right now. I don't really plan my day. I kind of let them go and see where it takes <coughs> me. Excuse but, me. of course, if I have things to do, I hit those checkpoints. But... Other than that, but um, a part of my day, I have to relax. I have to just take time for me. That's a part of all of my days because Mm -hmm. I'm around so many different people that if I don't, I'll probably go crazy. So Don't do that. Yeah, I have to just like take my moments. Mm -hmm. So while my daughter's at school, some of that is is my moment. Okay. Okay, I I hear that. I don't have a structure either. Um, I'm not a morning person, so I have to take a few moments. Like when I wake up, I have to like wake up. Yeah, and I'm really mean in the morning. <laughs> I am. I am not social. I am not the type to talk. Uh, and I've had to express that before to um, people I've dated. You know, some people like that. Excuse me, that morning conversation, that good morning text, I have to warm up to, to do that. Yeah. Cause. See, and I'm a person that's like, I like tradition, but I like freestyle too. So mm. when I'm with a person or somebody's getting in on me, it doesn't bother me to not receive a good morning text. Like somebody like, oh, they don't like you. And I'm like, they may just didn't feel like sending good morning or maybe they hate tried to eat some breakfast, they tried to use the bathroom shower, make it to work in time, and right. good morning just never came. You know, right. that doesn't bother me because I'm not sending it either, probably. I mean, <clears throat> but it's some days that I'm like, hey, let me send a good morning, you know? Right. And I feel like that's more special than be timing this good morning every mm. day. But I, instead of me timing it, I'm like, oh, I, got, I actually got time. Let me just go ahead and Good morning, you know. So you're saying rather than the, uh, I don't want to say monotony or the, the, what's the word when it's scheduled? Uh, yeah. You, you rather it be a little bit more sporadic to have meaning. Mm-hmm. I, I get that. I get that. Okay. All right. Spontaneous. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, the word. Yeah. It's, it, that's just how, I, and that's, it's the same with dating. Like, I don't want to be in that relationship that's like. Friday is date night, so make sure you don't do this because we're going out. I want to be in that relationship where we might not go on a date, and then bam, we on a date, and it's amazing. Right. Instead of the boring Friday date that we do every Friday. Not to say that it's boring for the people that do that, because some people need that schedule. They need it like that, but I prefer... We just chilling and it's like, hey, let's just go to the beach. I'm like, okay, come on, let's go. Mm. Like, I just prefer that. Okay. Is that like a place of respite for you, like the beach? Oh, yes. I need the beach. I would, I would like to go to the beach today. Really? I, yes, just sit at the beach. Well, it's not cool 
I'm, yeah, it's warm, but I wouldn't yeah. be in the water like that. The water. Oh no, you just want to sit. I there need in the to sun. be at the beach, and I need to hear the ocean. Water. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. That's soothing. Ooh, I haven't been to the beach. In I forever. need and say I haven't had my annual fall. Me and my friends, we normally we say we're gonna start a annual fall beach trip. We don't know when. Last year it was shrimp festival, and we stayed mm. at the beach. Um, but fall gonna be over soon, so we need to go ahead and do it. Mm. To just breathe. Saying that we don't have a fall, does Mobile even have a winter anymore? For real, for real. We had one last year. It was pretty cool. Mm. It's pretty cold. I, I needed to get cold, cold. Like. I don't need it to be cold, cold. <laughs> I'm okay with the cold because we we dropped to. I mean, in the fall for this fall, we just dropped to thirty seven degrees, twenty seven degrees one night. Huh. That's cold enough. That, that was just like one night, and then like the next uh, week it was like seventy. We had two weeks of cold. Oh, not over here. Yes, we did. We had two weeks of cold. It was actual cold. I was like, wait, are we going to have a cold winter? Wait. Because oh, I was kind of excited about it. But yeah, I, I don't, love the cold. Huntsville, yes. that's 17 degrees. That's what I, was, I miss. I was not with it. I do. We were practicing in 17 degrees. Oh, that's why you're not with it. Gotcha. I was not with it. <laughs> I was not. I was like, nope, I'm going to quit. <laughs> I ain't doing this no more. My yeah. mama just gonna have to be mad because she told me I can't quit, but I'm finna quit. Mm. <laughs> I can feel that. I can feel that. Ooh. I'm good with 30. 30 is pretty good. Yeah, dope. 30 is dope. You can lay your up. You can look fashionable in your yeah. winter. Because yeah. I like to dress for the winter. Right. And you know, we can't wear no coats down here for real. Man, no scarves or nothing. Uh but 30, we can't. <laughs> 30, you can wear some scarves and stuff. 30 is good. But everybody I say that to about to cuss me out. They like, no, we need 60 degrees to the wind. I'm like, that's hot. I'm yeah. going to be sweating. I see be 60 <laughs> in my house, bro. Uh-uh. I'm I'm, yes. That. I be what I need cool because I'm hot nature. Me too. And that changed about me as a child too. I used to love the spring and the summer. Now I love the fall and the winter. Yeah. I, I can't do spring. Spring, I'm sick. Spring, I'm allergies. Especially here. I miss yes. allergies. But you know what? I'm sorry, Mobile. I love you. But you are not good to me when Man. it comes to these allergies. My hair, my skin Dude. is not good to me. I'm going to have to leave. I I literally have to, like, let's say I'll be in for a day and go outside, do some stuff, and come in that entire night. Nose running, throat itching, That's why all my of skin's that. like this. I have eczema, and mm-hmm. my eczema flares up. When I'm here in Mobile, yeah. Huntsville never had it. I stayed in Huntsville three years, never had an outbreak. Yep. Stayed in Atlanta, never had an outbreak. The air is totally different. It's just too more. It's too mm-hmm. much moisture. Then the moisture that's in the air is polluted because we had that dirty water in the mm-hmm. bay. You know, it's just yeah. And when I try to wear my hair, it. Yep. I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, and I'm I'm the type that like to be bare skin, and I like to wear my real hair, mm. and I can't get away with neither one of those here. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. It's my skin trying to get toe up. I got marks all over my face from when I was breaking out. It's my atmosphere, partially with what I'm eating too. That's why I didn't change a lot of what I'm eating, but the atmosphere just don't do me good at all. Yeah, I uh, noticed like um, up there with the the difference in the air and stuff. Like I think like the first two years took me some time to adjust to it because you know they spring the spring spring, mm-hmm. and just like it is here. But it's it's not as lethal for us. Like um, the pollen is a lot more there because it was of the a trees. lot more pollen. But I don't remember my allergies acting up as bad as they exactly. do. Exactly, I think, and that's I the think air it's, quality. I still think it, yeah, I still think it's that moisture down here that mm-hmm. makes it ten times worse. Because, like you said, I do remember it being a whole bunch of pollen in Huntsville, mm-hmm. and we did have true spring. However, it was a weird spring too because sometimes it was still snow. Yes, it, I hell. remember it snowed in April one time. It did snow in April. I I don't know if me, me and you were both up there, but when I was Probably. there, it snowed in April, and I was like, 
And then I remember one time, I think it was March, a hailstorm came while while I was in class. And I'm like, but the day started off as like 75 degrees. Right. It was a beautiful, sunshiny day. Mm-hmm. Not a cloud in the sky. And when I'm leaving class, it's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I get hit in the forehead like- with... Hell, oh, I was like... Have you ever been in the car when it started hailing? I was in the car. I wasn't in the car. I was in the building, and I ran out, got pooped in the head, and got in the car, and it's hailing on the car. And I was just like... That is a scary sound hearing it. Yeah. It is scary, but it sounded scary in the building, too. Yeah. Because I was like, what? The rules. Yeah, he wouldn't you let us it. leave. He yeah. was like, we already here, so we finishing. I remember. Were you there? I think it was like... 20 2009 or 2010 we had a blizzard low-key it was like a foot and a there. half of snow i wasn't there in 2009 but i was there in 2010 and it snowed like bad i feel bad. like it was january 2011 it might have been because i was living in an apartment then and, and it and was we got bad. snowed in and count school all with well, the whole everything city was, was shut, shut down, down yep. and I end up going to my friend's apartment because they weren't serving food and stuff mm-hmm. on campus because the workers weren't allowed to come. And it's like that snow stuck because yep. it, 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 it was rained snow. a little bit. Yeah, it's and then it's all turned to ice. So yep. it was stuck on people's houses. It was stuck on the roads. Everybody was busting their butt on campus. Mm-hmm. Everybody was busting their butt just around the whole city. But we end up staying at my friend that is from Huntsville House. And I remember taking pictures and sending it to my parents. And I was like, look how pretty this is. Yeah, like, it was beautiful. But look at Because it really looked like how on the pictures in the Christmas movies, mm-hmm. the snow on the roofs. Then while I was there, eventually it started melting off and dropping down. Sliding and, off. And But those icicles. I forgot about the icicles. But yeah, that was, I think, if it was not the beginning of uh if it wasn't January 2011, it was uh, December 2010. Yeah, but I remember being right. there because I took all the pictures. I was like, oh, my God, Mama, it's snowing. And yeah. I took pictures and posted them because that's my first time actually being in snow snow. Because yeah. it was, like you say, it was inches. Yeah, I, I hated it. I Well, I loved it at first when it was I falling. liked it for 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and then I picked some snow. I was like, this hurts. Right. I went back in my dorm. And then I was on the first floor. So that had to be, like I said, it was either 10 or 11 because I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. And I was on the first floor in West, and they start having the snowball fight yep. right in front of my dorm. And they start throwing snowballs in my dorm room because we had the window up talking to them. I was like, I'm over this. I don't like snow. I would never live up north. I don't care. <laughs> I know my mama said never say never, but I ain't going up there. <laughs> I would. I think I, I think I may end up going back to uh, Huntsville at some point. I, I love it. Huntsville. Yeah, I miss it a lot. Huntsville is a beautiful city. It is. The mountains. It's just. Mount it's just oh, Yeah. Jones it's Valley beautiful. is beautiful. Oh, man. Let me stop. Huntsville is getting... beautiful. I miss Bridge Street. <laughs> yes. Bridge Street looks totally different now. Like, it's expanded a lot is more. Is it better? Yes. Because it was beautiful when, I, when we were there. Like It's a lot bigger now. You know where, uh, like, Mattress King and stuff was? Like Barely. that shopping center? I haven't been. Well, you know you had to go into Bridge Street and, like, go around by the movie theaters? Like, uh-huh. Bridge Street has expanded outward. So now. you can enter from a different area? Yeah. Now? Wow. Yeah. I never, I said I wanted to ride the little. Gondola? What is that? The thing the on water. the water? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I never did. Me either. I, I'm, I can't swim, so I'm not taking that chance. I'm taking the chance. Hey, you don't have to tell me about I believe I ain't going to die. You don't have to tell me about I it. I jet ski. No, because so, you can add it. So the person that I'm talking about, <laughs> that I was talking about, our first date was jet skiing. And I did not know him at all, for real. And I was like, what is wrong with me? You cannot swim. Why would you agree on a first date, first time ever seeing somebody in person jet skiing? He could dump you in this river. What are you doing? That was going through my head the whole time we was just skiing. And I was like, I don't think I ever do this again because I can't swim. And I almost had a full panic attack. And yeah. So but it was fun. Baby. I was about to say, did you have a good time? Or? Yes, no. Yes, no. <laughs> yes, no. He did because he laughed at me the whole time. Mm-mm. He just laughed. He was like, "This is hilarious." And I, I was just like, 
See, I don't even like the feeling of water hitting my chest or like going up my nose. As soon as that happened, I don't. I do like it no the more. water. I just can't swim. I need the line. I do too. I feel like being thirty-two. I need to know now. Yeah, it's inappropriate. Yeah, I can't be this old and not swim. I'm uh, probably never gonna swim. But my mama said never say never. Well, so we'll that's see. true. That's we'll true. You don't make me go get some lessons at the Y yes. or something. All right. Well. I guess we'll wrap this up with this question because I know you got things to do rather than sit here and just talk to me all day. <laughs> um, if God came down now and gave you one free question and he'd answer you immediately, what question would you ask? Um, hmm. Could it be a request? Sure. Because I really, like I'm, Almost 100%. I say I'm like 95% sure that I have been here before and mm. that I will be here again. Or if I don't be here, I'm going to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. I just want to request that my life don't be too stupid. That's it. Like, because it'd be a lot of stupid stuff going on. And I just want to request that I don't be put in a horrible life. Okay. Or a too hard of a life. I just, because this, this life was has been kind of tough. Like, I didn't have a bad childhood and stuff, but it's been some tough stuff, you know. I just request that the next one isn't as tough. So, that means the next one after that might be a little tough, okay. But I just request that I don't have a tough after tough. Because I feel like my last one probably was tough, too, because my soul feels a little tired, mm. you know. So... I'm just going to request that it's not as tough. You know, that's all. All right. I feel that. I believe that we've been here before, too. I, I, I don't believe everybody does it. I believe certain. So I have a theory. And this this actually comes from Hinduism. Um, I want to be a theory. I feel like your theory is similar to my theory. Okay. All right. You can tell um, me. And, and we, uh, I tell you what. I have, we'll save I have it. multiple theories, though. Okay, because I feel like we're going to get down to a rabbit hole. We'll, we'll save it for after the interview because I, I talked to you about that on one-on-one because -on -one, I don't want anybody to get all Christian oh, at I me. Oh, I don't care. I, well, okay, here's the thing. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Christian. That's perfectly fine. I'm not a Christian. I understand. I respect cre uh, Christianity. I respect Judaism. I respect all of that. And I feel like uh, all of it is real, to mm -hmm. be honest. Mm-hmm. That's why I respect it. And I respect all their gods. But I'm not a Christian. I understand. I, it took me a while to get that. I'm just going to say we're not the same. I am a Martian. That's all I'm saying. Hey, say. okay, Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Don't get me wrong. I'm not atheist. I right, do believe right. in God. I might not believe in your God. Though, right, who, right. Whoever you are and whatever you believe in. I might not believe in your God. But technically, I do believe in Christianity's God, Judaism's God, Islam God, because they are the same God. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we'll know. we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Um, but and I do answer to that God. Right. I don't answer to Jehovah, even though Jehovah is technically the same person as them. It's kind of like an AKA. Yes. You know. So, but I ain't gonna call him Jehovah though. Mm -hmm. Um. But the people that go a little deep in their research that still Christians, they know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. They know mm -hmm. what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Right. All right. Michelle, how can people get in contact with you? Or do you have any upcoming events? Anything um, you want to shout out? Oh, yes. I said it earlier, December 14th. Hey. Be there because we're going to do some special Christmas performances. Um Lady of Lords Church on DIP. So you can kind of Google Maps that. Um, $5 entry. December 14th. Game start at 7. Um, my next round for Dance with Shao. My kids session start in January. $15 a month per class. Uh, I'm at Hillsdale Rec now. And I'm at Peters Park, a.k.a. Sullivan Community Center. And adult classes are finally back. Dang. So all y'all that been asking me, adult classes are back. Major it, um, stretching affirmations, and seduction with shall. Those are the three adult classes that are coming back. They will be on Mondays at Hillsdale Rec. 
Mondays at Hillsdale Rec. $15 a month per class. That's not for every single class. That's per class. Gotcha. If you want to do all the classes, I'll have the price for that per month too. But nine times out of ten is going to be about $30 a month. So I'm keeping it affordable for y'all. So There we go. I need to see y'all there. And I will have free classes sometimes. And I'll post about that. But I am Dance with Shell on Facebook. Dance W Shell at Dance W Shell on Instagram. At Seduction W Shell on Instagram. And Shell Dancer on Facebook. All right. If y'all are watching, I've included the links but no. Beneath her lovely face, as she was speaking that, uh, and go give her a follow, man. She Dance she posts pretty. Shirt. Yeah, oh, the merch. Love the shirt, by the way. Dance hey. Thank you. And uh, you have any shirts for sale or anything? Mm -hmm. or? Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. It's coming. It's coming. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. And uh, go follow her, and uh, we'll include the links below. And uh, this has been Sir. This is Miss Shell doing the round two for. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Take your time out your day, and uh, we out. Peace.